and we will start with the nervous system and impact of trauma on the autonomic nervous system. So in order to understand impact of trauma on the autonomic nervous system, we need to review the concept of the window of tolerance. So just to remind you that um, the window of tolerance really deals with the levels of arousal that are maintained by our autonomic nervous system. And there are in general two branches in our autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Now parasympathetic is a really complex system and we can say that there are two branches of the parasympathetic as well, but just for the simplicity and clarity we will keep it as you know two branches sympathetic and parasympathetic where those branches work together well in a coordinated fashion we maintain optimal level of arousal and we are inside that window of tolerance so our arousal doesn't stay the same during the day and from one day to another day you know sometimes we may feel a little bit more energetic and present. Sometimes we may feel a little bit less energetic and present. But if our nervous system is healthy, we generally stay within this window of tolerance when we are awake. Now, when something really unusual hits, something unexpected and really stressful, those two branches may get dysregulated. And then we are thrown outside of the window of tolerance, in the, either in the hypoarousal zone underneath or hyperarousal zone above. So in the hypoarousal zone, we have parasympathetic response that is very, very pronounced. There is too much parasympathetic activation and not enough sympathetic activation. So if we think about sympathetic branch, metaphorically, as a gas pedal in the car, and parasympathetic branch as a brake in the car. So in this situation, there is too much brake and not enough gas in the system, right? So it's very, very, we slow down. Everything slows down in our uh, body. The symptoms of the hypoarousal have to do with a lot of fatigue and lack of energy, slowing down of our cognitive processes. We cannot quite figure out what's going on. We feel overwhelmed. Very often we may experience memory issues when we are in the hyperarousal. Um, Emotion-wise, we may either feel down, depressed, sad, kind of like suppressed, or we may feel numb and disconnected from our emotions. Now, when we are in the hyperarousal range, there is too much gas and not enough brake in the car. So it's, everything is really you know, increased and expedited in our system. So there is too much arousal. We are feeling fidgety and nervous and rushing. And you know, we may experience our cognitive processes as you know, having 300 thoughts in one moment and not really being able to catch any one of them or focus on any one of them. There may be increase in anxiety emotionally or in anger and irritability. Now, if our autonomic nervous system is healthy, these two branches will catch up and co-regulate with each other. We don't have to do anything consciously. It will happen automatically on its own. And so before we know it, we will be back inside that window of tolerance and we'll continue going. Right? So this is normal functioning. Now, in order to compare and contrast normal functioning of the autonomic nervous system with the complex and developmental trauma, I have chosen an image and a metaphor of a bridge. So think about window of tolerance as a bridge. In the normal situation, we have wide, steady bridge. Person may run on it, dance, do flips, you know, whatever they want, and they're not going to fall off the bridge. They will keep moving through the day crossing the day, you know, on this bridge. Now, if something really unusual happened, like huge storm came and blew them off the bridge, no big deal, because there is creek underneath, they dry themselves off, put themselves back on the bridge and keep going. So <clears throat> our complex and developmental trauma situation is very different from that. So the bridge here is really narrow and shaky. Step to the right, step to the left, and the person will fall off this bridge. So it takes a lot of energy to just stay on the bridge, okay? Not to not fall off it, so to speak. Now, when our trauma survivor falls off this bridge, there is no creek underneath, so they hit pretty hard. Very often there, are high, there is higher cost for them, 
of being outside of the window of tolerance and it's associated with more negative consequences when they fall outside of that window of tolerance. Now, to give you an example of that, of what we might see in our offices and how this might present you know, in our office, um, I wanted to tell you about um, the client that um, I have been seeing for a few years now. She's a woman in her 40s. Um, she is white. She has been married for uh, 20 years. And she and her husband have decided one day to sell some furniture from their house. So, you know, he's a photographer. They agreed that he will take some pictures and post them online, on different social media sites, and so forth. And this is what he did. So one day she opened up her Facebook account one morning and she saw those different pictures on her Facebook wall. She started looking at them and as she was looking at the pictures, she said that suddenly she felt the surge of anger and, and just like resentment and, and hurt. And she started having thoughts in her mind. My husband really doesn't care about me anymore. He humiliated me in front of my friends and family. I cannot believe he will do something like this to me. She ran to her husband and started screaming at him and calling him names. So she was extremely upset and really outside of her window of tolerance. When she came to the session to see me, she was crying and shaking and sobbing. And she was saying to me that she and her husband haven't talked for three days. This, they had this you know, thing happen three days ago. It was a huge fight. Uh, they were screaming at each other about divorce, and now they're not talking, and she's afraid that they are moving towards divorce, right? So when you know, I started, uh, uh, first of all, I helped her come inside her window of tolerance by doing a couple of yogic practices that we will actually do this morning, uh, later on. Once she was inside her window of tolerance, we started uh, uh, um, trying to understand, we started exploring to understand what has happened, what has happened, what made her so angry. And she had real difficulty with it, you know. She couldn't really uh, remember or understand or grasp it in any way. The only thing she could remember is that she looked at the pictures and she doesn't know what it was in the pictures, but suddenly she got into the state, you know, when she was just raging. So we started looking at those pictures, picture by picture by picture, and we spent some time, you know, looking at them, and finally she said this, and she pointed, you know, to a specific picture and a specific place on the picture, and you can see that there is a sticky note that she's pointing to, a sticky note on the door of the cupboard, okay, that was in the picture. And when she's saying this, this, the sticky note. So we're enlarging the sticky note. When you enlarge it, you can see that there is a recipe written on this note. There is the name of the dish, the ingredients that go into making the dish, and how to make the dish. And she proceeded to explain to me that in her family, they have a family cookbook that you know has a number of like really interesting original recipes in it that they're not sharing with the rest of the world. Okay, so they're passing this book from like one part of the family to another, from one generation to another, and it's their thing. So in, their, in her extended family, this cookbook has been a thing for quite a while now, and she's not supposed to share this with the rest of the world. So she wrote this recipe because they were expecting company of new friends from church who she wanted to surprise with this dish, and she cannot remember things. So she wrote it down for herself so that, and posted it so that she can remember the dish and what to buy and so forth. Now, as she's telling me about it, she is more kind of getting more into her thinking process and what was happening at that moment. And she said, in that moment, I felt like he betrayed me because he posted this recipe for everyone to see. And so now my family sees that I shared this recipe. You know, all of my friends now know what the recipe is. So it's not even a surprise anymore. And she felt really bad about it. So. Once she got outside of her window of tolerance, she couldn't think what it means and why maybe her husband did that, right? So she just assumed that he did it maliciously and he was out to get her and he disrespected her and so forth. Now, when she's inside her window of tolerance in the session and we are talking about it, she's saying things like, you know what, now that I think about it, 
my husband is not a detail-oriented person. He probably didn't even notice, you know, that there was this sticky note on this door, you know. And then she's saying, and even if he noticed, he's not a cook in our family. He doesn't give a damn about the cookbooks and recipes and all of that. It doesn't mean anything to him. She said, I'm not even aware if he knows about this generational cookbook thing, you know, <laughs> that is going on in my family. So. And now she's realizing, oh my God, you know, I really hurt my husband. And I really hurt this, you know, relationship and connection that we had with each other. So fell really down and hit pretty hard as far as the consequences go. It took her a while to really repair that with her husband because he was very hurt by, you know, how vicious she was in her attack, this emotional and verbal attack at him. Okay, makes sense? as far as what happens yeah, when the window of tolerance closes. Okay, so now with our complex and developmental trauma survivors, then we have the situation when they really spend most of their time outside of the window of tolerance, not necessarily as far as this particular client in that particular situation that I described, but pretty steadily outside of the window of tolerance either in the hyperarousal zone, hypoarousal zone, or more often moving back and forth between hyperarousal and hypoarousal and not being able to land for any long period of time inside that window of tolerance. Now, I wanted um, to talk about one specific nerve that is a part of our autonomic nervous system. And I wanted you to see kind of like a, the schematic picture of this nerve. So I'm talking about the vagus nerve here, which is the longest nerve in our body, and it innervates all kinds of different organs, internal organs, and runs through most of our torso, starting at the brain stem and running down, you know, through the whole torso. So this nerve, of course, is a part of the parasympathetic nervous system, but it also, you know, co-regulates these two branches. It participates, it has a very important role in co-regulating the branches and as a result, maintaining that window of tolerance. So the weeds and stability of our window of tolerance is pretty directly connected to the health of the vagus nerve and its ability to pass signals really quickly and uh, to pass high quality signals from body to the brain back and forth. Now, you know, what we know from research is that in trauma survivors, a lot of them have vagus nerve that is not really very healthy. They have low heart rate variability. This is how we me measure the strength and health of this nerve. We also know that in yoga, a lot of different physical practices are really focused on improving the health of this nerve from all kinds of different perspectives, movements, breathing, chanting. There is a lot in yoga that really affects vagus nerve. The more we trigger the vagus nerve, the stronger and the healthier it becomes. So that's kind of like the, you know, uh, the formula for improving the strength and the uh, health of this nerve. As we are moving through different practices, I will point out to you uh, which particular poses and practices uh, improve you know, the strength and quality of the vagus nerve. 